Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to learn about differential equations in which we can solve for x or y. This is known to be slightly tough than the things that we learned in the previous classes, but let's look at it. So, do you remember I told you p stands for, small p stands for dy by dx. And our equations will contain P, X and Y. And in the last video, we learned how to solve for P and how to find the solution of the differential equation. Okay, now the method for X or Y. So, look at this. First of all, solving for X, solving for X means you are going to write X in terms of P and Y. So point number one, what will you do? If you claim that you are solving for x, you are going to write x in terms of p and y. Similarly, if you are solving for y, then it means you are going to write the equation in terms of p and x. Is that clear? Okay, so that's the first thing to do. Now, the next thing to do is, if you are solving for x, if you are solving for x, then you have to differentiate that equation with respect to y. And if you are solving for y, we will differentiate that equation with respect to x. Okay, so once more let me make it very clear. Point number one. If you claim that you are solving for x, then you should write x completely in terms of p and y and second step you will differentiate this with respect to y now the third thing to do is you have to remember the fact dy by dx is no one else other than p so suppose when you differentiate you get dy by dx because when you differentiate y with respect to x you will get dy by dx so, as a third thing, you have to replace it with P. Now, your job is to simplify. Uh, you can do one thing. You can take all the quantities to the left or all the quantities to the right, but simplify. Now comes the confusing part. And to be honest, there is no guarantee. Only through your experience, you will be able to solve it properly. So, once more, if you are solving for x, you have to write x in terms of p and y. And if you are solving for y, you have to write y in terms of x and p. Anyway, the second step, you have to differentiate with respect to the other variable. For example, if you solve for x, you will differentiate with respect to y. If you solve for y, you will differentiate with respect to x. And the third thing to do, replace dy by dx with p and if you see dx by dy you replace it with 1 by p then simplify take everything to the left or take everything to the right simplify till in some problems you will be able to factorize now in problems in which you can factorize you have to understand that there will be two factors or more factors but you have to focus on the factor which contains x and dp by dx or y and dp by dy for the general solution. Okay, now um, if I explain more, you won't understand. We will solve a problem and understand this properly. So please write the first question. Solve the differential equation y plus px is equal to x to the power 4 into p square where p stands for dy by dx. Okay, now look at this. I can see that there is only one y and I can see the presence of x in two places. So, I feel that I can write y in terms of x very easily. So, look. This is an equation in which I solve for y. So what do you mean by solving for y? 
Solving for y means writing y in terms of x and p. So what's the second step to do? Yeah, if you solve for y, like in this example, I'll call it equation number 1 by the way, I have to find dy by dx. That means I'm differentiating with respect to x. Very simple. If you solve for y, you differentiate with respect to x. If you solve for x, you differentiate with respect to y. So we have to apply product rule here. So I'll put a bracket. First function, the derivative of x with respect to x will be 1 plus x into dp by dx. Again, we have to apply product rule here. First function, the derivative of p squared will be 2p dp by dx plus p square into 4x cube. Now, what should we do next? Yeah, we have to replace dy by dx with p and dx by dy with 1 by p. So look at this. Till now, we have regular steps. So point number one, you can write y in terms of x and p or x in terms of y and p. Point number two, differentiate with respect to the other variable. And point number three, replace dy by dx with p and dx by dy with 1 by p. Now, the confusing part has started. Look at this. Now, there is no guarantee. All we do is we take everything to one side. Either take everything to the left or everything to the right and keep on simplifying. There are a few possible cases. Maybe, maybe on simplification, your equation will become a linear equation. You remember linear differential equation? So solve it. Or maybe your equation will become a homogeneous differential equation. And maybe that is and that this happens whenever you are able to factorize actually. Maybe, maybe your equation will become a variable separable one. So this is why most of the students feel that this solvable for x and y is a little bit difficult. So after this it is freestyle. All you can do is you can take all the things to the left or all the things to the right and simplify and you can expect a linear equation or a homogeneous equation or you can factorize and one of the factors will be variable separable. Okay, let's give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything to the left. So P plus P that will be 2P minus will become plus and plus will become minus and 4p square x cube equal to 0. So look at this. In this problem, I can feel that we can factorize. And I'm going to take uh, 2 outside, p outside, x cube outside. That's intentional because can you see? We have x into dp by dx. So if I take 2p and x cube outside, I'll be left with x dp by dx. And minus has gone outside, it will be plus. Remaining is 2p. So see, I told you it's freestyle, like what you call. You never know till you simplify. So in this problem, I can factorize. So I'm going to take this uh, 2p plus x into dp by dx outside. And the remaining part 1 minus 2p x cube is equal to 0. Okay, now comes the next critical step. Now look at this. Whenever you factorize, whenever you factorize, you will be left with normally two factors itself. Okay. Now listen very, 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 very carefully. In one of the factors, you will be able to see dp by dx. In one of the factors, you will be able to see dp by dx. And that factor will give you general solution. Now, like I told you earlier, this factor can be variable separable. In most of the problems that they ask repeatedly in exam, uh, it is normally variable separable. But it can be linear also, it can be homogeneous also. Okay, so, but normally it will be variable separable. 
and can you see a factor in which there is no dp by dx that will give you something called singular solution now right now it is not important but in the next video we will learn something called clear out equation clear out equation is a very special equation the question will be always be in the form y is equal to px plus some function in p for example plus sin p or maybe plus uh, p square minus 1 so look at this clear out equation means it is a very special equation it is a solvable for y equation and it will be always 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 in the form y is equal to px plus some function in p now if you ever get a clear out equation you are supposed to find both general solution and singular solution according to your syllabus so let's continue so anyway the given equation is not clear out equation let me make it very very clear because you might feel that it is clear out no 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 it's not clear out can you see it is y is equal to minus p into x so basically it is not clear out equation and even the second part is not a function in p look x is also there okay so this is not clear out so i do not care about the singular solution i'll consider only this so i'll write Uh, you know this right if a and b equal to zero either a has to be zero or b has to be zero so 2p plus x into dp by dx equal to zero obviously this is variable separable obviously this is variable separable so 2p is equal to minus x into dp by dx now i'll make it variable separable so i'll cross multiply So two into dx by x is equal to minus dp by p, and I'm going to integrate. So two natural logarithm of x is equal to minus log p. Since all the terms contain log, I'll use log c. Now, what is two log x? It will be log x squared is equal to What is log a minus log b, log a by b? Anyway, you end up with x square is equal to c by p. Now, something very, 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 very important: the solution of a differential equation means you have to get an expression, or you have to get rid of this p from the given question. so you can claim that you have solved a differential equation once you eliminate dy and dx from the given equation i have told you before when we learned differential equation in the beginning so basically your aim is to destroy this p from the given equation but now in solvable for x and y equations that destruction of p might be little bit difficult so i'll tell you another option so what i'm going to do is i'll give you two options here i'll write this x square is equal to c by p so in examination you have two options you can look at any book uh, from which you are studying these things and if you look at that exercise etc you'll see two different types of answer so option number 1 i'm going to find the x value So I get x is equal to root c. Root c is another constant. So I'm going to put it as c by root p. Now what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll find equation number one. Equation number one means uh, the step in which we wrote y in terms of x. So that is minus p x plus x power four into p squared. So what I'm going to do is I'll find the y value that is minus p into x x is c by root p plus x power 4 x power 4 will be uh, what do you call c to the power 4 by root p the whole square the whole square so that will be p square into p square i'm just keeping it in equation number 1 now look at this uh, this gives me 
x equal to c by root p and y is equal to minus root p into c plus c to the power 4. Now look at this. This is very important. If you are going to write x and y in terms of p, that will be called a parametric solution. What do you call this? This is called parametric solution. So remember, whenever you are not able to destroy p, our method is very simple. We will write x and y in terms of p. And what do you call the solution? Parametric solution. Now, option number 2. Option number 2 is, uh, is all time favorite. That is, we will eliminate p from the given equation. So, what is the value of p? p is equal to c by x squared. What is the value of p? c by x squared. Now, I will go to the given equation or this equation anywhere. So, y plus px. So, that will be y plus p is equal to y plus px is equal to x power 4 into p squared. x power 4 into p squared will be c squared by x power 4. So look at this, we got y plus, you can simplify a little bit, c by x is equal to c square. So this is called the implicit solution. So look at this, you have to be very careful with this step. There are two options. Option number one, you can write x and y in terms of p. And if you are going to leave it as such, it is called the parametric solution. Option number 2, you can find the value of p from here and plug it into the given equation and you will get a relation between x and y. That is called implicit solution. Okay. So, um, in the next video, I will be back with a few more problems in solvable for x and y and finally, we will learn Clairaut's equation. So till then my friends, bye.